2.11, Lesson 2.6, Vocabulary for Speaking, Living with Communication Disability. Exercise B. Listen to the case studies of Maria, Alfred and Elena from the lecture. In this lecture, I'm going to talk about communication disability from the point of view of employment. Can people with communication disabilities work? Of course they can. But society needs to help them in many ways to get into the workplace. We need to make sure employers do not discriminate against people because of their disabilities. I mean, employers mustn't reject people for recruitment or promotion simply because of their disability. OK, we're going to consider three cases during this lecture. We'll come back to them on several occasions. Firstly, we have the case of Maria. Maria is 55 now. She can't see, but she was not blind from birth. She lost her sight in a car accident. However, she deals with her blindness extremely well. She has learnt Braille so she can read and write again. She has a guide dog. She now works full-time in the call centre. Secondly, there is Alfred. He's 28. Alfred can't hear, but he wasn't deaf when he was born. He lost his hearing as a result of an illness when he was 18. He deals with his deafness very well. He has learnt lip reading and sign language. He now works as a signer at the United Nations. He listens to speeches at meetings and signs the information for people who are deaf or hearing impaired. Finally, Elena. Elena is only seven. She can't speak. She has impaired speaking. As you probably know already, it is unacceptable these days to refer to people as mute or, even worse, dumb. She was born deaf, and deaf people have great difficulty in learning to speak. There is nothing wrong with Elena's speech organs, but her deafness means she does not know how to make speech sounds. However, she is working intensively with a speech therapist to help her produce speech. OK, so, those are our three cases. As I said, we will return to them several times. 2.12. Lesson 2.7. Real-time speaking. Braille. Reading and writing for the blind. Exercise C1. Listen to a student giving information about Braille to a study group. How does she talk about dates, ages and time periods? I'm going to tell you about the inventor of Braille. In fact, he gave his name to the system. I mean, he was called Braille. Louis Braille. He was born in 1809 in a small town near Paris. His father was a saddle maker. Louis wasn't blind from birth. He had an accident in his father's workshop when he was three. He was playing with an awl when he hit his eye with the tool. That's terrible! What an awful thing! Sorry, what's an awl? It's not an awl, it's an awl. A-W-L. I don't understand. Was he blinded in both eyes at once? No. He damaged his right eye, and then his left eye got infected. Oh, that's dreadful. Yes, it is. Anyway, where was I? I can't remember. <laughs> I've forgotten too. Oh yeah, you were talking about the accident. That's right. He lost his sight in both eyes. He went to a normal school for three years, but he didn't learn much. From 1815 to 1819, he didn't go to school. Then, in 1819, at the age of ten, he went to the National Institute for the Blind in Paris. While he was studying there, he learnt a system of reading for the blind. It involved large raised letters of the normal alphabet. Braille thought there must be a better way. 2.13 Exercise D1 Listen and repeat some of the sentences from the presentation. Copy the pronunciation, including the pauses. A. When he was three, he had an accident in his father's workshop. B. From 1815 to 1819, he didn't go to school. C. At the age of six, he left normal school. D. Then in 1819, at the age of ten, he went to the National Institute for the Blind in Paris. E. Sixteen years after his death, Braille became the worldwide standard. 2.14. Exercise E2. 
listen to a student presenting the information. What extra comments do the students make? For eight years, from 1821, he worked on his own system. He raised dots instead of letters. In his system, he used... Sorry, what are dots? They're small circles. He used an awl to raise the letters. In fact, he used the same tool which blinded him. Oh, that's an incredible coincidence. I don't know. He was probably thinking about the accident all the time. That's true. Now, I've forgotten what I was going to say. You were going to tell us about his system. Oh, yes. In his system, he used six dots. He finished it in 1829. A year before then, he became a teacher at the Institute. However, he was not allowed to teach his own system. Isn't that stupid? But while he was teaching the old method, he continued to work on his new one. And in 1837, he added the symbols for maths and for music. So he didn't stop with the symbols for the alphabet. Braille died in 1852 when he was only 43, but his system went on to be used all around the world. Just six months after his death, the National Institute switched to Braille's method, and in 1868, his system was accepted as the world standard. So, a poor blind boy invented a system which is used all over the world today. Isn't it amazing the way he dealt with his blindness and achieved so much? Two point fifteen. Everyday English. Talking on the phone. Exercise B two. Listen and complete the conversations. Conversation one. Hello. Could you give me David Marshall's email address, please? Certainly. It's D dot Marshall with two L's at Hadford dot AC dot UK. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Conversation 2. The person you have called is not available. Please leave a message after the tone. Hi Katya, it's Piera. Give me a call when you pick up this message. OK, talk to you later. Bye. Conversation 3. Hi Steph, it's Peter. How are you? Hi, fine. I can't hear you very well. Can you speak up? Do you know Alan's mobile number? You're breaking up. Can you hang up and redial? Conversation 4. Hi, is that Carlo? Sorry, I think you've got the wrong number. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no problem. Bye. Conversation 5. If you are calling about bus times, press 1. If you require information about family or student passes, or about day rover tickets, please press 2. For all other inquiries, please hold. You are in a queue. One of our operators will be with you as soon as possible. Conversation 6. Send me a text this afternoon. My phone's always on. OK, what's your number? It's 0774 Got it. I'll text you later. Conversation 7. Lesson 2.8. Learning new speaking skills. Repairing communication. Exercise A2. Listen, check and practice. A. Accept. B. Accident. C. Adopt. D. Institute. E. Inventor. F. Standard G System H Worldwide 2.17 Exercise B3 Listen, check and practice A He was born in a small town near Paris B he wasn't blind from birth. C. He left normal school three years later. D. He invented a system of reading. E. He became a teacher at his old school. F. He died in Paris in 1852. Two point eighteen. 
Exercise C3. Listen to the extract. Check your answers. He was playing with an awl when he hit his eye with the tool. Sorry, what's a gnawl? It's not a gnawl, it's an awl. I don't understand. Was he blinded in both eyes at once? No, he damaged his right eye and then his left eye got infected. That's dreadful. Yes, it is. Anyway, where was I? I can't remember. I've forgotten too. Oh yes, you were talking about the accident. That's right. 2.19. Pronunciation check. Listen and copy the linking and suppressing. He was blinded in an accident. It's a pointer tool. 2.20. Lesson 2.9. Grammar for speaking. Using the past continuous. Grammar box 7. Listen to the sentences in the tables. Braille was playing with an awl when it hit his eye. When he hit his eye, he damaged it. While the children were studying at the institute, they learnt a system of reading. 2.21.